You're watching Destiny Church. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. I'm, I'm JP, and on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastors Carlo and Shaleen, um, I would like to welcome you here to our church. But before we continue, may I know if anyone here is joining us for the first time? Meron po ba? Can you uh, raise your hands? Meron din. Oh yeah, wow, welcome, welcome po, welcome po, no? Wow, welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. We're so happy that you're, you're here joining us um, this morning. Just a brief uh, introduction. So why, why do we call ourselves Destiny? Why of all the words that we could name our church? Why Destiny? Because we believe in that word. No? We believe that God has a wonderful plan, a wonderful destiny for us. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11, the Lord says there, no? I know the plans I, know, I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Wow, yung, yung line pa lang na yun. Knowing that God has a wonderful plan prepared for us, that sparks something no, ba? In, in our hearts. That, wow, I'm, I'm not a mistake. I believe every one of us sitting here right now, you're not a mistake. And it's not a mistake. Na nandito po tayo ngayon, ngayong umaga. I believe God has a wonderful word prepared for specifically for you this morning. So, um, for the, so for the last weeks po, no, we've been, we're still in the series po of our, of our five solas or the pillars of our faith, what, what defines us as Christians. So um, we started po, so the five solas are here, sola scriptura, sola fide, sola gratia, Sola Christus, Sola Deo Gloria. We started with Sola Scriptura, meaning it's by God's word alone. Sola Christus, by Christ alone. Sola Fide, by faith alone. And I, I am so excited because I get to start finally. <laughs> Dati kasi yung mga ibang Sola, sumusunod lang ako. But, but right now, I get, I get to start this new uh, part of our Sola for us, which is, which is my personal favorite. Sola gratia. Sola gratia. Or by grace alone. Let me uh, give you a brief, uh, short definition before we, we head on. What does sola gratia mean? What does by grace alone mean? It says your sola gratia is simply acknowledging that the Bible teaches the totality of our salvation, that the totality of our salvation is a gift of grace from God. As it, as it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. It teaches us that our salvation is given to us by grace alone, given to us freely by God. Now, question that maybe we may be... Um, Asking right now, is it true that it's only through God that we could receive grace? Si Lord lang ba talaga? Sa Lord lang ba talaga manggagaling ang, ang grace? I want to start with this story. Um, one time by, I was in, ano, I was in, along pasong tamo, I was waiting for, for something. And then I was praying. I was praying during that time. I was eating. I was eating alone. Um, I, I believe this is a, a mall. I, if I'm not mistaken, uni. Why? Sa tapat ng Don Bosco, if you're familiar along Alampas. I was eating there, and then waiting for my the, for, waiting for the car to be fixed. Because we pinasok namin sa kasa para repair. I was just sitting there, and then I was praying. God, what do you want me to do today, Lord? I'm praying, God, na, Lord, thank you. You've been so good to me. You've been so good in my life. Your grace has been so sufficient. God, how do you want to use me today? What do you want me to do today? I was praying that. I walked out. Lumabas po ako ng, ano, no, ng, ng mall. And I was walking. And uh, malayo pa lang, may nakikita ako. There was this guy. Matanda na siya, si Lolo. May payong. Umuulan ng time na yun. May payong siya. And then he was walking slowly. And then, ako nag, naglalakad pa rin ako. I'm still praying the same prayer. Lord, how, how, how do you want to use me? How do you want to use me today? 
lalado nito ako. Pag palapit na ako doon sa ano, una hindi ko pa siya napapansin masyado. But then when I got closer to him, mas nakita ko na siya yung features niya. An old man looking so tired. Raining hard, may payong. And then, pagkita ko sa may bandages. There are bandages in, you know, in, his, in his feet. And then I heard. Di ba, pinagpipray ko, Lord, how do you want to use me today? I heard that still small voice. You know, you know guys, ito, when, when we pray, prayer is not just a, an, hindi siya one, like a one-way communication. When we pray, God really wants to talk to us. I'm telling you, try it. In your alone time, like, just spend that time in silence and listening. That God, what do you want to tell me today? So I was doing that, and then I saw this man, and then there was, there was a still small voice suddenly that whispered, JP, you see that man? Talk to him. Nung na-feel ko yun, I felt that conviction. Lalaad pa rin ako. Sabi ko, hindi, hindi, hindi galing sa Lord to. Ako lang to. Guni-guni ko lang to. Wala yan, wala yan. <laughs> Spray ulit ako, Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do today? Nung mas lumapit na si, Lee at si Lolo, hindi na still small voice. Medyo mas lumala sa JP, see that man. Talk to him. Pray for him. Hindi, hindi, hindi si Lord to. Ako lang to. <laughs> Hanggang sa nagkasalbong na kami. Nakasalubong ko na siya. And then, I saw him in his complete outfit, uh, wearing torn jackets. Kaya pala siya mabagal maglakad. There were bandages on his, ano, on his foot. And hirap na siya maglakad. The point na tumigil na lang siya yung nagpahinga ng ganun. You see him, you, you would expect him to be begging for food, for money. But no, he was just there, slowly walking, and then they passed him. Nilagpasan ko. Hindi ako nakinig sa Lord. Paglagpas ko, after a few meters of me passing him, hindi na still small voice, parang drum na, dum, dum, JP, go back, pray for that man. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Sige, pray natin, pray natin. I talk to him, I, I approach him. Lo, ano, okay lang po ba? Okay, kailangan niyo po ng tulong. It's, it, like, mind blown. I was expecting na sa, uh, an old guy na, oh, po, wala ko pong tulong, lilimus po ako. I, I talked to him. You know what his reply was? Sabi ko, Lo, kailangan niyo pong tulong. Kasi nakita ko, parang hirap na kayo maglakad eh. I was expecting him to talk about it, the bandages on his feet. No, this is what he said. He replied to me, Gulat ako. Straight English. He told me, you know, I've been walking for hours and hours this whole length of the street. I went to my previous employer asking for money because I need help. They wouldn't help me. And I walked again going, going to this government office believing that they could help me. I walked the government official just said to me, sorry, there's nothing we can do. Sabi niya sa akin, all I needed, naiyak na siya, all I needed is 2,000 pesos so that I could bury my dead son. All I needed was 2,000 pesos to bury my dead child. No one could help me. This is what amazed me. Sabi niya, and you know what? When I was walking here, I'm so tired. Sabi niya sa akin, what? I've been praying for someone to come and just help me. Wow. I was praying, Lord, how do you want me to use? How do you want to use me today? On the other side of the street, there's this man. Lord, send someone to help me. Send someone to help me. I talked to him. I prayed for him. I gave him what I could give. And then I just left it at that. I said, Lord, I want to help you. And then I prayed for him. And he told me, my son, God bless you. God bless you. Even. And then he, he marched away. Before I go on to the end of this story. This is what I was thinking while I was preparing for this message. Si Lolo, I, I, I'll never forget his name, si Lolo Aurelio. Lolo Aurelio, 
he believed, he had faith that his former employer could help him. He had faith that maybe this government official could help him. He walked, and that's why he walked. He walked, my, uh, he walked hours and hours to get help because he was not going to help. But then, again, his belief wasn't enough. His belief wasn't enough. For it is by grace you are saved through faith. He had faith that this person could help him. But there was one element missing. That person that he believed in, he believed in lacked love, mercy, compassion, and kindness. They lack grace. For it's by grace you have been saved through faith. Yes, we may have faith, but it will amount to nothing apart from grace. Grace comes first before our faith. How do, how do we define? Before I go on to define more about, about, about faith, what, what is the world's definition of faith? Faith uh, of, uh, of grace. No? Grace is... Um, Favor from someone. That's how defined. That's why when you know, um, papapanood yung mga old movies. I love this. You know, in uh, uh, the when someone would approach the king, he, they would stand. I stand before your grace or your favor. I stayed in his good graces, or I stayed in the good graces of of someone. Now, before we further define on what grace, the biblical grace truly means we need to have a background of why we need grace in the first place. Why do we need grace? Here's the thing. First, we need grace because, first and foremost, we are wicked beings because of the wickedness of man. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great, in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, evil continually. Come on, let's listen to this, no? The Lord said that the make wickedness of man was great, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Going back to the to the, to the story, no? I went home. Una wala lang sa akin, eh, no? yun, yun lang yari. But then I went home. And then suddenly it struck me. It hit me. It hit me hard what just happened. It dawned on me what, what the old man was going through. There was an old man who was walking for hours just to find enough money para malibing niya yung anak niya. Hindi niya malibing yung anak niya. Eh. And I was there. I was so convicted. I bowed down before the Lord. I was crying, Lord. You know, that, while that man was walking, no one even dared to talk to him. No one dared assist him. No one dared help him. Lord, 2,000 pesos. For some of us, pantalon lang yun eh. It's nothing. We could get that. But no one could help him. And ito yung pinakamasakit. Lord, even I, I even passed him. Lord, forgive me. Wretched man, I am. Only thinking of what, what, what could benefit me. When we talk about wickedness, we the first picture that comes into our mind is I don't, I don't know, uh, a picture of like evil, pure evil and wickedness in the world. Um, I was reading an article, not really an article, but a, a post one time. Um, if you're familiar, diba, recently Russia invaded Ukraine. And then I, we were exposed to even more evil in this world. I was, I, there was this testimony of a Russian soldier. He said while well, he was being interviewed. He was being interviewed and said, ah, how, how's the war in Ukraine going? How does it feel for you to be killing? Like basically your brother, because Russians and Ukrainians are there of the same descent. You know what? You know what his reply was? You know what? You know what I feel? It's, it's, it's just hard for me to say. No? But it's, it's like, oh my goodness. But we need to hear this. 
it needs to be talked about here. This, are, this is how some people think. You know what the Russian soldier said? You know what I feel when I kill a Ukrainian soldier? It arouses me to the point that I am being aroused. There's so much delight knowing that I killed this man. And he was so proud. And you know what brings me greater delight? Knowing that I made someone a widow. <laughs> Knowing that I made someone fatherless. It brings me great joy. Knowing that. Let's not be under the illusion that man was naturally born to be good and kind. Jesus describes our condition perfectly. And that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil, continually. You may be thinking, no, no, di naman ako ganun kasama. Siguro pag nagsin ako, konti lang naman, maliit lang naman. Romans 3, verse 23, the Lord says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not one of us here, not me. Not even me preaching here right now. Every one of us fall short of the glory of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Wow, this is how the Bible de describes us. We are, apart from Jesus, apart from being saved, we are children of wrath. What does it mean to be a children of wrath? When, when Paul says, when the, in the writing before, when you, when you say that something is a children, someone is a children of something, it means that that person is destined for. When Paul says that you are children of light, it means we are destined for light and eternity with Jesus. When Paul says we are children of wrath, it means that is our basic nature we are destined for wrath. The wrath of God. Eternal judgment. For our wickedness, for all the evil thoughts that keep on flowing in our mind. We are destined for eternal separation from God. Why? Because God, our God is holy. Our God is a holy God. And I remember this one time, um, one of my favorite stories from Josh, Mac uh, Josh McDowell, yes. Josh McDowell, uh, f uh, one time, he, he, he was in Bible school. And then, yung mga classmates yung nagde-debate. Sabi nung isang classmate niya, there's nothing God can't do. <laughs> uh, there's nothing God, how many of you would believe there's nothing God can't do? Tama naman, di ba? There's nothing God can't do, Josh McDowell said. I disagree. There are a few things God can't do. I can, in fact, give you three right now. Like, if you hear that, you would say, like, heresy, blasphemy! <laughs> Our God can do everything! But then he says, I can give you three things. One, God cannot lie. <laughs> Tama ba? He will not lie. Second, God cannot change. He will never change. Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end never changing, all-powerful, all-knowing. And lastly, here, here, here's what stru struck me. God cannot let sinners enter His presence because He is holy. Children of wrath are destined for separation. There's no way for us to enter the pearly gates. Romans 6, verse 23, the wages of sin. Here's the problem. The wages of sin is death. Death meaning that separation from the love of God. Now, knowing this, how, how, how can we solve it right now? Is it possible for man to solve it by himself, this problem of wickedness? 
Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Because by the works of the law, no one will be justified. Here's the second problem why we need grace. First, man, because of the wickedness of man. Second, because of the helplessness of man. There is no way we can save ourselves. Going back to our main verse, Ephesians chapter 2, For it's by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Isaiah chapter 66, chapter 64, verse 6. All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. All of us have become like one who is unclean. Ano daw yung itsura ng righteous acts natin? Maybe we, we are here right now, no? We may be claiming, hindi naman ako ganun kasama. Mabait naman ako. Actually, Lord, agi nga ako nasa Sunday service, eh. Actually, Lord, tumutulong nga ako sa may hirap. Pag may charity nga akong tinutulungan. Tsaka kung magkasala naman ako, Lord, konti lang. This is the Bible say, all of our acts, the righteousness that we think we have, filthy, rags before the Lord. We can't save ourselves. Who can save us then? What's then? What then is the answer? Before I go to that, I want to read Jeremiah 17 verse 9 to further drive the point. Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is. Wow. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? No, two things that we could, we, could, we could get from this verse. Number one, it perfectly describes who we are. If we become honest with ourselves and just check our thoughts. I don't, well, while I was preparing this, there's a conviction coming up upon my heart. And napapatunong ako sa Lord na, Lord, ba't nga ba ganito kasama yung puso ko? You know, I, I may be standing here right now. I do not claim to be righteous or, or what. Actually, when, while I was pre- preparing this message, like my, I was teary and I was convicted. This is one of the messages that's so hard, so hard to preach. When I was studying this, the heart is deceit, this desperately wicked pinaalala sa akin ng Lord yung thoughts ng heart ko. Kala mo mabait ka. You remember the time you were driving? Sabi ng Lord sa akin. And then someone cut you off. What went on to your mind? I'll just be honest, no? What went on in your mind? Pwede lang manakit ng tao. Ginawa ko na. Have you ever had that time that someone is light to you? Kahit konti lang naman, nainis ka, nakapila ka, may, <laughs> may sumingit sa pila, may nakaaway ka, nagpost ka, nagcomment siya sa post mo, nainis ka. What, were, what was running through your mind? If you were like me, Lord, pwede lang saktan to eh. Pwede lang manakit. And then mapapacheck ka, ba't ako ganito mag-isip? Lord, I'm sorry. These thoughts. Why? The human heart is deceitful above all things. Desperately wicked. Next, and then it he ends by, who really knows how bad it is? I can tell you. I, I think this is my, my bet. No? no one in this world, no, no famous psychologist, psychiatrist, could really deeply describe the depths of a human heart. I can only think of one person as a person of Jesus Christ. Ito na, binigay niya na. 
You know how, would I, how I would describe the human heart? The, mo the most deceitful of all things. Desperately wicked. Even in our thoughts. The writer asks a question, who really knows how bad it is? I believe, this is my personal belief now, and no one else could provide a remedy for our, prob for our problem, for this problem of wickedness. No one else can provide a remedy for that because no one else knows us as good. No one else knows us closely as intimately as our maker. No one else can provide a remedy for our sin because no one else knows us. Psalms 139, verse 13 to 16. For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. No one knows us better than Jesus. While we were being formed in the womb, he already knew us. He knows what's going on in our hearts. He knows our plans. He knows what's going to happen. No one else What is then God's answer for this malady that we're facing, for this problem? We, Lord, I'm so wicked. Lord, I'm full of sin. And Lord, there's nothing I can do to help myself, Lord. What is the answer? The answer is one word. Grace. For all the wickedness and sin upon sin upon sin of men. Grace. I can somebody can come up here. No, I, I believe this will be better with some music. What is the grace of God? Ephesians chapter, let's go back, go back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 10. 4 to 10. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace. You have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. What? Wow. How is this possible? Lord, do you see how sinful I am, how wicked I am? But here, are you telling me, Lord, that despite my wickedness, despite everything that I did, are you telling me here right now, God, that the answer for this, for this is something that would be given to me for free? Despite everything that I did? What is grace? According to Carl Truman, the author of the book entitled Grace Alone, a search for the word grace and its cognates in the English Standard Version yields over 150 occurrences in the Old and New Testaments. In the Old Testament, grace would be defined as this. Grace is God's loving kindness. <sighs> loving kindness. In the New Testament, it would be defined as God's favor, undeserved favor, unmerited favor that saves us. Theologically, grace 
has a twofold significance in the Bible. First, it most typically means the unmerited favor of God. Unmerited favor meaning something that we do not deserve. We do not deserve it. Next, grace means that the active, the active outworking of God's unmerited favor in the life of believers. In other words, it is because we are saved by grace that grace then works in our lives to accomplish God's purposes for us. The Christian life starts with grace, continues in grace, and will finish by God's grace alone. The Christian life both originates and is lived by God's grace from beginning to the end. It's all by God's grace alone. How do we define grace? It's God's unmerited, undeserved favor. And it is God's enabling power out of His loving kindness, out of the revelation of the love God has for us, for us to do greater works for Him. In short, maybe for, it would be easier for us to, to remember. No? In short, grace is both pardon and power. What is grace? Grace is pardon. Grace is power. A few elements of grace or a few aspects of grace. I just want to show you how deep God's grace is. That God's grace is so deep that we could call it many names. One of my favorites is this, saving grace. What is God's grace? It's saving grace. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 10, again. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together in Christ. By grace you have been saved. A while ago, we read from Romans, for the, wa- for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of life is eternal life. But the gift of God is eternal life. Christ Jesus. Romans 5 verse 1 to 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though whom, through whom we have gained access by faith into His grace in which now we stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Another word for saving grace is the grace in which we stand. Let me read this again. It's so beautiful. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into His grace in which now we stand. What does it mean that we have now peace with God? I remember Paul describes us a while ago as children of wrath, children who are at war with God, meaning there's no peace between God and man because there is sin. And then grace enters. And because of grace, we could stand before the Lord. Not because of our works, but we gain access by faith into His grace in which now we stand. It's grace in which we stand. Another name for grace, extravagant grace. Extravagant grace. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 to 8. In Him, we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. What's the word lavish? What does lavish mean? The word lavish may be a strange word for some of us. To lavish means to give extravagantly, abundantly, and generously without holding back It means to bestow, to pour, to shower, expend something, extravagant quantities on someone. God's grace for us is extravagant. He doesn't give, He doesn't, He doesn't just give us what we need. He gives us more and more and more. He lavishes grace upon us. You may be thinking, Lord, I'm too wicked. I'm too sinful. Lord, you know what's in my heart. What does God say? I would lavish grace 
upon you, I would bestow, pour, shower, even more, even more than you can imagine. Number three, undeserved, undeserved grace. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Not one of us is righteous. Not one of us deserves this. You know what we deserve? This is, this is crazy. If we talk, we, we, we are a nation who cries justice. You want justice. You want what's fair. Here's what's going to happen if we demand justice from the Lord. If we, get, if we demand fairness from the Lord. Justice is this. That we would be the ones hanging on the cross. Why? The wages of sin is death. We would be spending eternity apart from God. That is justice. That is fair. And we can't argue that. Why? Because we are sinners. But this is grace. You don't deserve to enter God's presence. So He sent someone to take the place your punishment so you can be with him undeserved (laughs) and lastly grace upon grace what's grace upon grace John chapter 1 John testified concerning him He cried out saying, This is the one I spoke about when I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Listen, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. Listen, out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. What does this mean? Jesus is full of grace. And John says that, I'm reading from an article. Jesus is full of grace and John says that from the fullness we John, his original readers, and the rest of us who have trusted in Christ have received grace and more grace. Listen, one hallmark of any interaction with Jesus is grace. One hallmark of any interaction with Jesus is grace. Christians receive grace and then more grace. Grace serve on top of grace. Grace and then in place of that, more grace. That the point is that Christ is full of grace. And those who know Him get showered with grace. When we were preparing for this preaching, you know, this, this came from, from, pa- from Pastor Carlo. We see grace in different lights. It is not intangible because we see it in the personhood of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself is grace. Grace upon grace. And maybe you don't fully get it yet right now, but I'm going to share, I'm going to end with this story. I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then here, in this story, I'm going to show you what extravagant grace, what saving grace, what undeserved grace, what grace upon grace really means. It's the story of the prodigal son. Luke 15, verse 11 to 22. You know, when we say Jesus is grace personified, he was the one who gave us this parable. And I believe, no, he he gave us this parable for us to understand what his love, what his grace really means. Verse 11, Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and and there squandered his wealth in wild living. 
after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that, in that whole country. And he began to be in need. So he, w- he went and hired himself out to a citizen of the country who sent him to the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. But no one gave him anything. So this is the story, no? The prodigal son. What did the prodigal son do? Sabi niya sa tatay niya, Tay, pwedeng makuha ko na yung mana ko. That's wrong in two, in, you know, no, in two senses because number one, he's the youngest son. And in, during that time, you know, the, yung mana, mapupunta sa oldest son. Second, di pa naman patay yung tatay niya. Kunuha niya na yung mana niya. So, di, alam niyo, like, the gravity of what he did. It was as if telling his father, Dad, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. And then he went on. And sabi dito, he squandered his wealth in wild living. He spent everything that we had. He went after pleasure, after pleasure, after pleasure. Wickedness upon wickedness upon wickedness. You know, his sin did not stop there. Sa paghingi niya ng mana, no? he, he went on to squander his wealth, trying to satisfy his lust, trying to satisfy his flesh. We are no different. We are no different. You know what, ha- what happens when we sin? Para siguro inisip natin, no? hindi naman ako ganyang kasama. <laughs> I'm not like the prodigal son. You know what happens when we decide to commit sin? No matter how small it is. It is us telling the Lord, Lord, I want to be separated from you. Lord, I don't want to have anything to do with you. I want to leave your house. Why? Because sin separates us. Sin separates us. Here's what happened. No? While he was squandering his wealth, naubos yung kayamanan niya. And then he was hungry. And then he realized something. When I was in my father's house, I never went hungry. Never naman ako nagkulang. When I was in my father's house, I never felt empty. Maybe this is not only for unbelievers. No? This is for some Christians who believe that they could do away with church. I'm okay. Even if I don't go to church, I'm okay. Oh, now saved naman ako. Mal naman ako ng Panginoon. Kahit di na ako mag-church. Kahit di na ako mag-serve lagi. Dito na lang ako. Dito lang ako sa bahay. For of those of you who feel that right now, isn't it true? the more you distance yourself away from God from the church the more that emptiness creeps in and then you will be wondering hindi naman ako ganito dati ah. hindi naman ako ganito dati naalala ko before nung when I was still serving the Lord oo pagod ako oo napapagod ako pero pag uwi ko, bakit ganun? Pagod ako, pero pag uwi ko, anong punong-puno yung puso ko? My heart is so full. Maybe some of us would begin to realize that right now na the more, the more steps you take away from your father's house, the more that hunger builds. The more that emptiness builds. So what did the son decide to do? When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am, starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. I, I, I like us to, uh, no, to, to focus on, on, this, on this verse. No? It says here, The son, he rehearsed 
Kung ano sasabihin niya sa tatay niya? Sabi niya, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Just remember that line. Make me like one of your hired servants. What does that mean? The son wanted access again to his father's household. He knew that he lost his access when he disregarded his sonship. So anong inisip niya? Para makabalik ako sa house ng tatay ko, maybe I could work it out. Maybe I could maybe my father would accept me as his servant. So he, he got up and went to his father. Now I was reading studies on it. Sabi nga, sabi nung, some scholars would say, is it possible that the son at this point wasn't even really truly repentant? Possible kaya na umuwi lang siya kasi gutom na siya eh. Kailangan ko na ng pagkain. So, naisip niya, yung mga servant nga sa bahay ng tatay ko, hindi nagugutom. So siguro pag naging servant ako, eh, maybe I could work it out. And finally be, my, my hunger would be satisfied. Some would argue that maybe the son wasn't even truly repentant by then. But he still decided to go home, rehearse his line, try to make his father accept him as a servant, and make that long journey home. And then everything changed. Everything changed when this happened, that mentality of being a servant, of working out or his problem, of not being truly repentant, everything changed when this happened. So, listen, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. This is big. This is big. Why? What does it mean that the father ran towards his son? Towards his son. Maybe sa atin parang okay lang yung, yung running, a father running towards his son. Di ba? Parang Hollywood movie lang na dinidibig niya. Parang yung mga drama na. And parang sa, for us, it's something happy and, and so na tear-jerking to watch. But for the Hebrews during that time, it was abominable. <laughs> it was humiliating. Men do not run. Especially men of his stature. In tatay, there's no way you would see a Middle Eastern man run. Why? Because that, their, their, their outfit was this. And yung suit po nila, Um, it looked like a, a long gun. It, it went to, to, the, to, their, to their feet. And you wouldn't be able to run <laughs> in, in that, no? So imagine, no, parang naka-skirt ka. So yung tatakbo yung tatay, kailangan niyang, ano, ganun siya tatakbo. Pero hindi niya gagawin, hindi siya makakatakbo. So what, what, what will he do? In order for him to run, he, ne- he needs to pull up his garment. Pull up, hilain niyang ganun. Ano mangyari? His bare legs would be exposed. Almost half naked. And could you imagine him running in his household, almost half naked, running like that, humiliating himself in front of the people. Not only, not only that, ito ba yung isang nakakamangha dito sa story na to, no? When the son stepped, when the son went home, while he was still at the edge of his father's territory, the father already saw him. Ano yung sabihin nun? Is it possible that from the first day that the son went away from his father, from the first day, from the day that he said, Tay, ayoko na sa'yo, kunin ko na yung mana ko, alis na ako. And then he went out. His father was watching his son walk away with his riches, strolling along, up until the edge of his household, of his territory, until hindi niya nakakita yung anak niya. And from that day, even from that day, the father waited 
from day one. Is it possible? No, there's, there's only one reason eh. Bakit yung tatay yung unang nakakita dun sa anak? Why not the other people? There's only one reason. What? The father was waiting this whole time for his child to come back to him. Why was he waiting? Why did he wait? Why did he humiliate himself? Why did he have to run because of this? In the first century, a Middle Eastern man never, never ran. I'm reading from the um, article from Biola. If he were to run, he would have to hitch up his tunic so he would not trip. So why did he run? Kenneth Bailey, author of The Cross and the Prodigal, explains that if a Jewish son, if a Jewish son lost his inheritance, just like what the young, son, young man did, among Gentiles and then returned home, the community would perform a ceremony called the Kezaza. So there's a ceremony called Kezaza. What is that? They would break a large pot in front of him and yell, You are now cut off from your people. The community would totally reject him. So what's going to happen if the young man returned? And, and kung yung tatay niya, kung yung tatay niya nakauna nakita sa kanya, the villagers could perform the kezaza. Makita na lang, Uy, ito yung bastos na anak, oh. Ito yung walang yung anak. Binustos niya tatay niya. Tapos ngayon, babalik-balik siya dito. Kunin niyo yung pot. Come on, get ready with the pot. We're gonna perform the kezaza. We're gonna break it in front of him and we're gonna reject him. We're gonna harm him. We're gonna humiliate him. So that he would never come back to this house. Why did the father run? He probably ran in order to get to his son before he entered the village. The, listen, the father runs and shames himself in an effort to get to his son before the community gets to him. So that his son does not experience the shame and humiliation and taunting and rejection. The village would have followed the running father, would have witnessed what took place at the edge of the village between father and son after, the, after this emotional reuniting. Let me stop there. One day, the servants were, wa- were working. Nagulat na lang sa'yo bila, bigla. Oh, ba't tumatakbo yung ano, master natin? Ba't siya tumatakbo? Why did he put up his tunic and then he was running? So lahat sila nagulat. Taktaw- Pwedeng nagtakbuan din sila, sanunda nila. Sir, sir, ba't ka tumatakbo? Only to see this. Their master hugging this young man who they recognize as the one who left them, who rejected them. And you know what they realized that time? When they saw the father hugging his son, they said, hmm, there will be no kezaza ceremony today. There will be no kezaza. The son has been Restored. Father humiliating himself. You know, when the time came and Jesus was about to be crucified, you know what they did to him? They crowned him with thorns. He nagupit yung likod took away he took away his tunic his, his robe went on the cross bloody naked humiliated it was no accident that Jesus was the one who preached this parable because he knew what was about to happen just as the father humiliated himself to save his son Jesus was gonna humiliate himself to save his children 
who turned their backs on him because of sin, who did not deserve this grace that was he that he was about to pour upon them. But but still, he went, he carried the cross, humiliating himself. Just to tell the world, just to tell Satan that no, there would no, there would be no kezaza ceremony for my child. Are we so different from the prodigal son? Do we really deserve this love? That the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, maker of the universe, He who placed the stars in the sky, would come down in this lowly earth and humiliate Himself to save us. We do not deserve it. Grace, undeserved grace, saving grace. doesn't stop there. You remember the line that the son rehearsed? I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Remember that line? But when the father, filled with compassion, ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him, you know what the son said? I, I'm sure nirehearse niya na yung line na yun. Na, Father, just make me like one of your servants. You know what the son said? The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. You see something? Some, something's missing. Right? Something's different. The son was rehearsing it again and again. Accept me as one of your servants. But when he went to his father, what happened to the line? What happened to being a servant? Two ideas that that scholars believe would ha- that happened. One, it's because the son was there when the son was making his confession. Before, even before, the son could say. Father, make me like one of your servants. The father cut him off. The father cut him off. Another is this. The son rehearsed the line. Lord, make me, Father, make me your servant. But when his father hugged him, tears flowing from his eyes, son, I'm so happy you're here, you returned. What did the son say? Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But he stopped short of saying, make me like one of your servants. Why? Because when he experienced the Father's love, the Father's grace and embrace, he knew he no longer needed to work in order to be accepted. Whether it was omitted because the father cut him off or the son did not say it. One thing that God's making, God wants to make clear here, we don't need to be servants. We do not need to work for salvation, for grace. It's God saying, no, it's okay. You don't need to do anything. You are my son. You are my daughter. Welcome back. Welcome home. God's grace is this. It's so attractive. Is it possible that it was what changed the heart of the son? Maybe at first he wasn't truly repentant, but when you realize, grabe, grabe yung pagmamahal ng tatay ko. Grabe yung love ng tatay ko. That was what really changed his heart. Now, it's God's love that draws us to him in the first place. By grace, through faith.
and in ending. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf, fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. This is what God's grace does. Now, God's grace has the power to restore. God's grace is extravagant. Grace upon grace. When the son was hugging his father, that's where he experienced ito pala. This is what it means to have grace upon grace upon grace. Despite my many sins, despite me leaving him, despite me disquandering his wealth, he hugs me. He restores me. Gives back what was lost. Grace upon grace upon grace. He experienced it through what? Through the hug of the Father, we experience it through what? Through Jesus. For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son. Whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Romans 5, verse 15 to 17. But there's a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and His gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And the result of God's gracious gift is very different from the result of one man's sin. For Adam's sin led to condemnation. But God's free gift leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins it is grace God's free gift that leads to our being made right with God even though we are guilty of many sins Anyway, I just want to invite everyone to to pray right now. You're that we're here right now, and you you want to tell the Lord, Lord. God, sorry for all the things that I did. God, I realize now, Lord, the wickedness of my heart. I realize right now that I am guilty of many sins. Father, right now, Lord, I also realize, God, what you did. What you did for me and how much you deeply and truly love me. I realize, God, how much your grace is upon my life. Right now, Lord, I just want to turn away. Turn away from my sins. You know, the story of the prodigal son. It's a beautiful story of grace and love and mercy. There's one thing that the son did. He turned back. He turned back to his father. He made that conscious effort of saying, God... I have sinned. I have sinned against you. 
Lord, take me back. Take me back into your household. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Father, thank you, God. Thank you for what you did for us. Thank you for restoring us. Thank you, God, now. We don't have to work for it. That you give this to us freely, humiliating yourself. So that we could be with you. Thank you, God. Thank you. What is the result then of this grace that has been given upon us? Is it because God has grace upon grace for us? We can continue to sin and sin more? I believe that when the son hugged his father, he knew one thing. God, grabe pagmamahal mo sa akin, Lord. Lord, I never want to break your heart again. Lord, I realize what you did for me, what you sacrificed for me. Lord, I do not want to break your heart again. I don't want to be away from you again. What does grace do? Grace calls us to do better. You know, if, if you are not changed by grace, A.W. Tozer said, if you are not changed by grace, then we are not saved by grace. Grace changes us. So right now, so allow the Lord to change me. Tell the Lord, Lord, thank you for what you did, Lord. From now on, I'm going to do better, God. I'm going to do better. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 10. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works so that no one may boast for we are his worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For by grace you have been saved. For we are his worksmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. I invite everyone to stand right now. First, we want to want to tell the Lord right now. Lord, thank you for your grace. God, I pray that you would let your grace, Lord, change me and renew me. I want you to tell that to the Lord right now. And if you, you're here for the, you're here for the first time. And you defer, this is the first time you've attended, you've really encountered what, what Jesus did for you. I want to tell the Lord right now, Lord, thank you for your love. Thank you for what, you're, what you did. And maybe you want to take that leap just like what the, the prodigal son did. You want to tell the Lord, I want to go back to your house. Feel your love. And be with you again. Be with you. If you're the first son, if you're that person, it's your first time, you want to tell that to the Lord right now. All is bow down, all is close. I want you to raise your hand up right now. Yes, raise your hand up to the Lord. Yes, the Lord sees that hand. The Lord sees your hand. The Lord sees your hand. The Lord sees your hand. Yes, the Lord sees your hand. The Lord sees your hand and the Lord's, the Lord's looking upon you right now. Yes, my son, my daughter, I see you. I see you. Right now, as an act of faith, no? As an act of faith, just like what the son did. I'd like you to come forward right now. Don't worry. You don't have to come alone. Everyone who, who, 
mga kasama mo, you, you, everyone, you, the one who invited you, they could come with you right here to the front. It's okay if, you, if you're that person, no? you're the one who invited them, you could, you could help them. You could, pwede mo natin sama, no? It's okay. This is, this is, this is an act that we do. Just like what the son did. Returning home. Lord the Lord. Singapore, it's okay. We could. I'm, 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 I think I'm sure. No, we've, we've not done this for the longest time, and maybe we're shy. That's been. It hasn't been done for the longest time in the church. But listen, this is between you and God. This is between you and the Lord. So again, last last call point for that person. We'd like to invite you. Come on, let's just encourage them. We'd like to encourage you right now to, to go to the front. Jesus name. Amen, amen. It's, it's okay, it's okay if you're, you guys still have that, ano, nag-alingan pa tayo. It's okay. The Lord sees your heart. The Lord sees your hand. For those of you who raise your hand, I want you to follow me in this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. thank you for my life. Thank you. thank you for dying on the cross for me. Father, from this day on, we accept you in our lives, in our hearts, as our Lord and our Savior. And we promise to love you all of our days. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I just want to pray for everyone. Lord, thank you again for this time, God. Thank you for, for your revelation, Lord, of your grace upon our lives. Father, may your grace enable us, Lord God. Lord God, to turn our backs against sin, Lord God, and turn our hearts towards you, Lord God, that every day, God, of our lives, Lord, we would live under the knowledge that God, grabe ang pagmamahal mo sa amin, Lord. That we would not choose sin over your love anymore, God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we praise you and we lift to you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 You're watching Destiny Church. If you would like to check more resources or donate to this ministry, you can download the Destiny Church PH official app or log on to www.destinychurch.org.ph.